Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prono Coders Office Hours, episode number 173. I'm your host, Tanya, and we are here with members Lachlan and Jonathan was here. Maybe he'll come back, and Sean and Ben. And we're going to get started in just a moment. But before we do, I want to let you know a little bit about what Prono Coders Office Hours is. Every day of the week, Monday through Friday, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific time, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time, and a new session on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. So six times per week, we go live uh, with our Zoom calls. We broadcast to Facebook and Twitter, and then we upload the videos to YouTube afterwards. And we invite our members onto the Zoom and they can ask us any bubble questions they want. And we do our darndest to answer their questions. And, and we have backup plans and we have backup plans for our backup plans. So if there's some reason we can't answer the question here on office hours, we have what's called the vault. And we will put in a request to the vault and we get backup help from Eli Beachy and Paul Aradia, and it's uh, it's awesome. So if you would like to join Prono Coders so you can come on office hours, go to pronocoders.com. You will see the plans there and you can sign up for the one that makes the most sense to you. But beware, Prono Coders office hours right now is only $99 per month, but the price is going up. On January 1st, we're raising the price to $120 per month. So, or sorry, $119 per month. So if you are going to uh, sign up, sign up now while you get grandfathered into the $99 rate and save the money because you don't want to miss out. All right, we're going to get started here. I have a question from, I think Lachlan was wondering about the Canvas tools that he sees on the right-hand side here. And so I'm going to show a little bit about that. And actually, it's perfect because I need to register this uh, Canvas app. So what it is, Lachlan, is when you start an app, you can select a template to use uh, when you first start your app. So you can't import a template afterwards. You have to start the app with the template. And the template I started with is this Canvas base template. So you can get it, it's free. It doesn't cost anything to get the template. And then what that does for you is when you actually start the app, and I'll just show you here, you can select start from a template. And then it gives you some base pages to work with. <laughs> of note, so you get the index page, um, but all apps have index pages, um, but you get the admin portal, you get the account page, you get the legal, the login, and this page here is really interesting because it's not really a page at all. It's more like a placeholder for, um, for Canvas has a page builder that I'll show you. Um, yep, and those are the Canvas specific pages. And then on top of that, uh, Canvas has a, an extension in the Chrome extension store and you can install that extension and it, it sort of gives you a lot of flexibility with your Canvas template. So I'm gonna go ahead and register this and show you how that part of it works. So I'll just go to the admin. Come on, Bubble. We believe in you. We think you can, we think you can. The admin page always takes a little bit longer to, uh, to load because it has so much stuff in it. But as you're about to see, it's pretty powerful. Recently in the Facebook group, I've had a few people ask me if uh, the Canvas template and the pages and blocks, if they're compatible with the new responsive engine? And the answer is no. We have, uh, Canvas is, is produced by AirDev and it is not yet built on the new responsive engine. Um, eventually they will convert everything over to the new responsive engine. The new responsive engine is not going anywhere. 
but it is not yet. But what I recommend if you're interested in Canvas and you like Canvas and what it can do for you is any of your new apps that you're starting, go ahead and start them with the Canvas template. And then you can always build pages outside of Canvas and use the new responsive engine for those. Eventually, oh, so they're, they're not mutually exclusive. You can you can run no, them they're not. Off. Yep, they're not mutually exclusive. And eventually, when Canvas does have uh, the new mobile responsive pages and blocks, you'll be able to import them um, into your app. So uh, the first thing in my launch checklist, I have to. Oh, it wants me to watch a video. I don't want to watch that. I'll just do the app identifiers first, and then I will register the app. And then Canvas pretty much already knows me. So I think. Hopefully if you're their queen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if there's a queen of Canvas, I think her name is Faye, to be honest. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just choosing one here. First of all, register the app. Has there been any timeline for the Canvas in your responsive or it's just not being talked about yet? So the last I heard, they were waiting until it's out of beta because specifically because they have had early access to the new responsive engine and the, they know that um, Bubble is making some, is still making some key decisions and they wanted to wait until those key decisions about the new responsive engine have been made before they make their decisions on how to integrate with it. So for right now, I don't, I don't think they're working on it. They're pro I mean, everybody's been super like interested and intrigued by it. So we're all playing around with it. Um, you know, Eli is on our team and he's one of the canvas builders. Um, so one of the canvas devs and so uh yeah so they're they're definitely preparing for it and they want to get it done as soon as possible i also think they're going to be motivated a bit because i heard one developer say that they're like they're so excited about the new responsive editor and how fast and easy it is to use that they they want to wait to take on another project from AirDev until that's done so um they're they're definitely motivated to get it done but if if they know something that I don't know in terms of the key decisions being made at Bubble, then it probably makes perfect sense for them to wait. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so now I've registered. So when I come back in here, you can see instead of giving me the register your app, it's saying, okay, now you can add a page and so forth. But to add a page, you have to go to the design tab. And so I click add a new page and then I have a whole menu of different pages that I can add um, different types of layouts and things that I can add to my app. One of the most popular ones is this standard portal dashboard page. If it says get premium, it means you have to pay for one of those um, licenses instead. So I'm just gonna add a dashboard page. And just call it dashboard because that's easy. And this is a little different than the other. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there's another plugin on my page as well, um, or extension down at the bottom, and it's made with frames. And so Canvas works a little bit more deeply than Made With Frames. Made With Frames is more about visual elements that you can paste onto the page. Um, so this one is more about visual elements and not whole pages. And it doesn't really have any, it doesn't come with any workflows. Whereas Canvas, you go onto the workflow page and you already have several workflows already done for you. So you'd sort of say like maybe Canvas for building apps and then the other ones for maybe like a website or something. Exactly, precisely. 
Um, well, I mean, you can you can add the workflows like they come ready with buttons and things like that. But but Canvas has a certain it has a certain depth and it has a certain logic to it that is missing with uh, made with frames. So it, Canvas is more like a mindset of building. I learned so much just learning how to use Canvas is what I would say. So um, now I have this page. And one thing you'll notice about this page is not very much is visible on the page. Um, part of that is because this is actually empty. There aren't any blocks in this page. So I'm going to go ahead and add a block or two to the page just so we have something to work with. So let's see here. What? Yeah, this one will do. So one of the things in a Canvas page that goes on every page is a main group um, that's 860 pixels wide. And then all of their blocks fit into that 860 pixels. So everything's mix and match. And th then they all come with the same design aesthetic. So they fit really well together. And then the one other thing that you can do in addition to that is you can also update your app colors. So all Canvas standard comes with these colors, but I can simply go in here and change each of these colors to something else that I like better. And I can, up, if I click this button, it would take a few minutes, so I won't, I won't demonstrate it live, but what it does is it goes in here and anytime you see a primary, like it says primary, it will change that to what I said as the primary color instead and so forth. So it changes, you know, hundreds of styles in the matter of a few minutes. So you don't have to spend all that time going back and setting it yourself and doing it manually. And does that sort of include like hover and on click effects as well? Or is it, it just the, the base color? Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. Yep, it does. So you'll see on the condition here, in this case, the button is hovered. It's pretty much the same, but uh, other ones you can see, like it, like you can have this. Well, that's weird. It's showing the same color, but in in actuality, like I I know for a fact it usually has a different color for the hovers, right? And for when the button is pressed, and you don't have to think about that. So I will let. Uh, I will let Faye know that this is happening. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is a huge time saver. And one of the reasons why I was super excited, they released the version of Canvas um, that had the colors where you could just set them up with a button click on New Year's, uh, December 29th. So almost New Year's uh, last year, and it's world changing. So, um, yep. So then once you come back in here, now you have to hook everything up. So if you wanted to make like a new something on the button click, you have to say, you have to go to it and say, okay, I want, there we go. Start and edit this workflow. So here you can start to hook things up and make things happen. They even have pop-ups that you can do. Um, the biggest thing with using Canvas, one of the biggest things of using Canvas is that it comes responsive out of the box. And it was one of the major reasons why I gravitated toward Canvas. Um, the other reason is I'm just not a designer in general. I don't like to think about design too much. Um, not the like specifics. Like I like to think about like where things are on the page in the easiest way to get to things, but I don't like to think too much about like polishing everything to make it consistent. And so Canvas saves you a lot of time that way because everything except the admin portal comes responsive out of the box. But with that, the biggest thing in Canvas is you have to be careful not to break the responsiveness because all it takes for me to break something's responsiveness is to just grab it and move it. And now it's broken, right? And 
AirDev and Canvas will not fix that for you. So it's uh, you have to be very careful to make sure that that if you're resizing things, you just keep checking back in the preview and making sure that you haven't broken them. So that's Canvas in a nutshell. The cool Looks thing like is, oh, go ahead. Looks awesome. Uh, yeah. So I guess in yeah, terms amazing. of you know your your view. Um, you know, would you, I guess there's no limitations to actually, as you said, using Canvas as a, as a base point. And then if you wanted to also build um, you know, new pages within the Flex, if, uh, the new Flex editor, you can do that as well. That, and you can also, if you wanted to have a section of a page that's in the new responsive, you can use a reusable with the new responsive editor and have that, that reusable on an old responsive page. So if they, there's there's a way to mix and match and do a hybrid. Is that like headers and footers as reusable elements? Um, not just headers and footers. Like if I was actually scoping this app, this particular app out, I would have actually had my designer put this block in a reusable instead of directly on the page just because um, my portal pages tend to get, you know, 30,000 pixels tall. And that's a lot of elements and a lot of workflows to go on one page and it will definitely slow the page down. That's why the admin portal is super slow is it's not compartmentalized in reusables the way that I like to use reusables. Um, but as you can see, I didn't really do anything and I already have this template to work with. So it's, it's a huge time saver. There's a learning curve, but once you learn it, it's it's really it's really wonderful. I think we might start using that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm happy to. Um, so Pablo and Eli and I are all work for AirDev, as does Juan. We're all experts in Canvas. So whenever you need Prono Coders help um, with Canvas, we're we're at your service. We're ready to go. We love it. Awesome. Very cool. Ben, did you have a general question for me? Uh, I just wanted to find out. So you talk about scoping projects a lot. Do you use, like, is there a template for that or that you can recommend or something that you use that you can recommend for scoping projects? Sure. So AirDev does have a template that they work, uh, work with and, um, and I do, and I, and I like that template quite a bit, but I've kind of simplified it for myself outside of AirDev. So I can kind of go through those steps. Hang on just a second. Let me open up my brain here. Also known as workflowy. There we go. So, um, so like my scope template kind of goes through like some big sections, right? So I like to always start with the objective, like what are we building? What do we want to have in the in the MVP, basically, like the first version? Um, then I go into like uh, design stuff. So I want to know, um, I didn't want to know colors, logos, and things like that. And then I go into the the users, like I define if there are different types of users. So generally there's gonna be a standard user and then there's gonna be an app admin user. I almost always recommend that you have an admin portal and that you remove um, administrative work out of the backend editor. Cause I don't think, I don't think it's good to update your database from the database 99% of the time. Um, and then, but you might separate your standard users. Like a lot of times you'll have uh, buyers versus sellers, if those are too distinct, or maybe you would have um, freelancers and businesses, right? So if you're connecting like two different types of users together in your app in a two-sided marketplace for some reason. So, so I think through the users, then the next, I think through the pages and by pages, I don't necessarily mean individual bubble pages 
because I tend to like, um, and I have waffled on this over the last year. It's been quite a learning experience. But I like the, um, I like doing as, I won't say everything on one page because that tends to break quite often, but I would say as much of the user's session on one page as possible. And the reason for that is one of the main, I wouldn't say detriments, but costs of having an app versus a static website is that the page page loads take a long time because it's, you know, Bubble has to render a lot of different things in order for the app to work. And so what you're, what, what I'm aiming to do by reducing the number of individual Bubble pages in an app is reducing the number of page loads that the user has to experience in order to get their work done or in order to um, do what the app is intended to do. So, um, so think through the pages like admin portal, um, user portal, account page. And then if you need to have any other specific individual pages, um, I try tend to try to do as much as possible in each user's portal as you can, right? So if I had a freelancer and business uh, marketplace, like a gig marketplace, I would probably have a free freelancer portal and then a business portal. Right. And then after thinking through like the pages and the experiences that I want the user to have and separating those out, um, then I start to think in terms of database, like what is the best database structure to support the experiences that I sort of lay out in each of these pages. And remember, the page is not just a single purpose. Um, portals have tabs. So you have to think through like, what is an admin portal going to have versus what's the freelancer portal going to have and so forth. Um, and then thinking in uh, pages, the other piece of this is when you're thinking through the tabs, you can also think in terms of reusables because when you use reusables on the page for each tab, and then sometimes even reusables within reusables, um, then what you're doing is you're taking, you're taking elements and workflows off of the page that needs to be loaded and putting that burden into individual reusables, which speeds up not just your page load, but also your editor. So when you're working in the editor, you will have a much better time if you're working with reusables because things will be faster. It can be a little tricky learning how to use reusables. I think we, we kind of covered that, Ben, earlier on when you came on to office hours, um, but it's well worth it to learn how to move data in URL parameters and custom states um, in order to be able to use reusables and chunk everything down into reusables so that you're page loads much, much faster that way. So did that answer your questions like how I do that? I, I can drill down farther into like, like what I do here is I would say, um, freelancers can search jobs and search jobs, search and apply for, apply for jobs. And then I can say, businesses can list and hire freelancers for jobs like that. And then in each page, I would say like, okay, list the tabs. There's going to be um, jobs. There's going to be gigs, like jobs are the listings. Gigs are the ones I've landed. Um, and then there's gonna be invoicing, invoices like that sort of thing. And then I list out when I'm thinking through these things, I say exactly what the user will be able to do in each of the sections I list it out. Um, and then it used to be as a product manager, I had to also wireframe all of these experiences, but they've, they've recently moved that part of it off of my plate. I feel much more comfortable wireframing apps now 
than I used to. Um, of course, it was never extremely hard because Canvas has, uh, as you saw in here, they just have tons of different pages and blocks to work with. So, and when you're designing an app for that's going to be built on Canvas, you're trying to utilize these things as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, that's how I do the scope. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. I, I noticed it, 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 sorry. No, go ahead. Finished. I noticed in the app, there was a calendar function. Could you show me how that works in that Canvas template? Uh, let's see, you noticed in, was it a block? Uh, yeah, so on the dashboard, um, you had previously one of the blocks on the left said calendar, as if it was- Oh, a... gotcha, yeah, okay, so calendar. Manage events, okay. Let's see if they have a calendar. I think we tend to use Air Calendar as a plugin for that. Okay. I'm not sure that we have a calendar block. I have often thought we should though. Um, let's search by calendar keyword. Oh, look at that, monthly calendar scheduling widget. So I don't think that's what you're looking for though, because you're looking for like being able to see what's going on in the calendar. Is that right? Yeah, but that's all right. So we just need to use a plugin or something. Yeah, so I, I actually think um, the one, that video that I sent over might be better for your purposes. Yeah, I think rebuilding it's, it ourselves will be the better option potentially as well, but I'll get John to explore that further. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, calendar, I, I, it seems to me like they should have figured it out by now. Uh, calendars and getting, getting all of them, making that easier, but working with dates, I tell you what, I cut my teeth on date stuff when I was first starting out. It was painful, but it was worth it. Any other questions? No? There was a, a bug that we we found in our application that perhaps um, you can help us out with. We had a, a sure. piece of text that we, we can't find where it is and how to get rid of it. So every time our app loads, there's a, a small piece of text that appears and then disappears upon our object appearing. And yeah, we can't for a life as work out how to get rid of the, that, that text. I bet you it's in a reusable, like in your header, and it's outside of the frame of the header, so you can't see it. That's, what, that's where things tend to be when, when that happens to me. So I'll show you what I mean. So this, um, this page here has the header. If I go into my header here, and I have a text element, and let's say I draw the text element here, and somehow it gets dragged here. Sometimes it you can actually get it, and it it won't even be like if I do. No, it's not letting me. It's like trying to behave now. Maybe they fixed that bug. <laughs> Maybe they fixed that bug and you're and you're somehow like still experiencing mm -hmm. it because it managed. But like it it is possible for you to like have I have seen this happen on more than one occasion. It says underscore tab or something. Something underscore tab. It's very weird. Nope, and still wants to behave for me now. But if I go here, let's see how it's right there. And so you have to like, you have to figure out like where it is Right, because if I go but, but, and I look on this page, I won't find it because it's not on this page, it's on this reusable. But, but that's static. So this one just flashes. It, it's there for a moment and then it disappears. So it's, it's only when we load up the, 
the application for the first time. Oh, I bet you what it is, is it's, um, I bet you, you have a condition on something that hides it when a condition is true. And probably what you want to do is flip it and have it so that it's not visible on page load. And then it's shown when it should be shown. If it should be shown. We can't even find the element itself. So that's probably our first So if point. you <laughs> go here. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we can't se select it because it disappears as soon as we load it. So and it's not visible on our editor. So we can't see it to edit it. It's, it's something I think I'll have to record, but it's basically, the, even if I refresh the page, it doesn't happen. But if I was to log in as a new user for the first time or in a new browser, it flashes for like a split second. It says something underscore tab, and then it disappears and it's and it's like big on the screen and then it's gone. It's. Have you tried something underscore tab? Have you tried to look for yeah, the yeah, just, app search yep, and you can't yep. find it at all? No. Ooh, that's, no. What, that's what Juan would say. Oh, it's haunted. <laughs> it's a haunted app but i bet you um no i love puzzles like that so we we well, can look might, for it now if to you get want. like a no <laughs> I, it's okay I'm, i might need to get like a video recording of it happening okay. like a particular instance and i'll just send it to you guys because yeah then it'll make sense yeah but yeah, it's, 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 it's quite hard to replicate sometimes it's sort of like a yeah. It is the once off. It's the first instance of when you log in. So you might need to do it through like an incognito browser or something to clear the cache and then yeah, try again and then you can see it appear for that very first time. Oops. Yep. Oh bugs. Um that's actually something that I would probably like if I was having trouble finding it, finding people who who do their living as designers in bubble, they would be able to find it like in no time. I'm sure they're just so fast. So, what else can I tell you? Let's see. Oh, I can show you made with frames if you're interested. Yep. Yeah, I think the other question I had was, um, do you work with Airtable into the bubble much, or is that sort of not really? I love that's... it's Ben oh, and yeah. I are Airtable nerds. We love Airtable. So good. It's been a dream to work with. I actually have to do some Airtable investigation with Bubble tonight, so I could do that. <laughs> so, um, scoping a new project, and it's going to be uh, synced up with Airtable. They were gonna use Airtable as their database, but we've suggested that they not do that. Um, and instead, what we wanna do is we just wanna go ahead and have them be able to add Airtable records like you do, Ben, and then go back and pick up the new records. But what we also wanna do is we also wanna be able to pick up any modifications in Airtable and then just really keep the bubble database and the Airtable database synced up so interesting and are you activating that or syncing it via a webhook on the row update nope so i love the bubble plugin that um that bubble made the the air dev plugin that bubble made uh it's super powerful the air table one yep the air table one so, so you just said the air dev one. I was like, did I do sorry, that? no air dev air table. <laughs> too many airs, it, air code. There's airs. too much air in my head. <laughs> so, yeah, see, I even typed air dev instead of air table. That's just habit. Yeah, I worked in air table for years before I even knew bubble was a thing. So. So this is like kind of a, a no code solution to building an API connection, is it? Or is it still need a bit of code? Uh, this? Yeah. This doesn't require any code. Awesome. No. All you do is you add your account, you put in your API key, and then you can add as many tables as you want um, to interact with. And then you can, once you have that, um, I think I will sign up for a new Airtable account. 
it's going to log. I'm already logged into Airtable, so I have to log out. See, I told you I use Airtable. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> just, just a couple times. Uh, so let's sign up for free. And let's sign up with Google. Why not? All right, so if I go in here, I'm on the free trial here, which they let me use the API for that. So I can come in here and I can generate an API key and I can copy it. And then all it takes is I come back in here and I paste it and say, trial account. And so now I have to put a table in here that I want to connect with. So come in here, let's see here, let's title the base. Um, table bubble and first table. And we can see this stuff is pretty normal here. So now I just add another table and we can do, oh, some something that happens here is when, if you add your API key uh, before you have the table, you kind of have to redo it. I noticed, did you notice that Ben? Uh, yep. Also, there's a, a, I reported a bug on that the other day and they said that they're working on it, which is, if you're trying to bring in images from Airtable into Bubble, they, they're not rendering properly. They're coming in super. That's what I was going to test. Thank you for telling me, because okay. that's that's a critical uh, component. And it's a really bad one, too, because you can't, like, it's not easy to get images out of Airtable. No. Yeah, like, just I'm, in general, to manually do it is painful. Yeah, this was last week, so maybe they fixed it. But last time I tried it, it was wasn't working. Got it. Oh, was it integers or images? Images. Ah, oh, okay. So. Yeah, Airtable's got integers down. I was gonna say that's pretty fundamental. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty critical. <laughs> yeah, but their images, I noticed even working with like years ago, I was kind of like, this is kind of dumb that I can't just download all of these images or something it was yeah it was pretty silly actually this would be an interesting thing to work on would be is there a way to download the image and then show it instead of just bringing it in from Airtable because it doesn't even work if you've got the image url it still doesn't work it comes in fuzzy and weird hmm. we're having a very similar issue with another platform at the moment actually <laughs> Oh, with another platform other than Airtable, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So getting the, the image and pushing it somewhere, it's just been a whole schmuzzle this morning. <laughs> it has. It's its really, really frustrating. I had that same thing. Like I was doing an API connector integration with Discord and Bubble, and it just was like super painful. So the big thing is you just select your base and you select which table and then you can initialize. And in this case, the attachment is an attachment that's correct. Um, the name is text, the notes are text and the status is text. If you, if I had other, uh, something else that I could make it, like Ben and I were working with some APIs earlier today and we were, they were sending in the date as number. And so what Bubble recognized it as was a number, but I just needed to switch it to be date instead so that Bubble would render it as a date. Um, but this should be fine. And so I set it so that I can create and modify um, in Airtable records with Bubble, but I can also use the Airtable records as data. 
So I have flexibility here. I tend not to mess with deletion. Um, I, I think we did some deletion stuff, Ben, where we were like deleting the record after it was imported. Uh, we tried that and then what we ended up doing was um, changing the status so it came out of the view. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, but then I, you know, if I want to set up a workflow where I can uh, add stuff to it, I could just go in and make a page here and say create AT stuff. And have an input for name. And then an input for status. Probably a multi line input for notes. I forget what the, oh, the other one was attachment. So I could probably try for an attachment with an uploader. File uploader? Let's try picture uploader. Why not? And then on a save button, I now have access in my plugins to Airtable. I can create a new record and I can add the picture uploader's value, the name's value, the notes value, status notes value, and the status value. And so I preview new record, brand new. This is a note. And then I can go into Airtable. And I have my new record. And it always amazes me. Every single time it amazes me. <laughs> it doesn't get old. Oh, are you guys still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Yep, sorry. Yep. I was about so to say, it just looks super convenient. Yeah. It is really convenient and and it's so much nicer. Like the limitation, I guess, is even when you're like on the pro version of Airtable, you only get 50,000 records per table, which saying only 50 and 50,000 in the same sentence sometimes is like what? But but yeah, it's um, if you're doing any kind of automated record stuff, like you can blow through 50,000 records pretty quick. Um, and from what I understand, I, they're probably improving all the time, but, but things probably get a little clunky in Airtable. I know personally working with 10,000 records in, um, in a single table in a base, like things start to slow down quite a bit with Airtable. But if you are doing some careful management of how many records you actually need to move into Airtable from Bubble, it's much nicer work to work with the data um, in Airtable and not reinvent the wheel, right? Because the kind of things that you can do here with in Airtable, building that kind of functionality into, um, into Bubble, I mean, sometimes it's just plain impossible. Bubble does not have formula fields. Like you cannot make a field in Bubble be a formula, 
whereas you can in Airtable. So. But I could also read this record from Airtable, right? So if I added a new record here and said, this is an Airtable record. And, and how is the performance of, of using Airtable as a you know, substitute backend if you need to, to pull data to show on pages? Yeah, we'll show you in just a second. So um, I can add a different photo and we can test that photo problem. And I guess the question is, you said that for a certain client that the, the, the Airtable became you know, not a, an ideal solution. When's that crossover point of when, you know, a dedicated backend such as Sano or, or, or um, you know, backenders would be required to, as opposed yeah, to I don't even think, I don't even think Airtable, like when I was researching it, when I was first starting or whatever, Airtable doesn't even recommend that you use them as a database for apps, right? So, um, so I don't think that's just my opinion. Like that's something I remember reading. Now that was a few years ago. So maybe they've changed their minds, but I doubt it because I don't think they, I think they intend primarily for their users to be in Airtable. In fact, they just released last month their own app builder around like from within Airtable. What's it called Ben? I forgot already. Yeah, I saw something about that as well. Yeah. Which is really cool. I think it's awesome. I guess there's so many dedicated apps now that have done that exact same thing that I guess they're just trying to take back that market share for themselves. I, I don't blame them at all. Um, so, yeah. So I would say that I would probably never... The only thing I would use Airtable to do and pull in from Airtable would probably be a formula. Like I would sync it and then I would use that formula. But at that point, I'd probably I'm probably going with backend listers and Zan, Zano if it was like if I'm expecting any kind of volume in the records. Cool. So. And if it was a fairly like static, you know, bits of information, there's not too many users, and that would you know, Airtable suffice? Do you think as a short-term solution? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I have several apps to do that, so I'm I'm scoping out one now. I'm in the middle of a build with another that was using Airtable for a really long time is the back end. The one that's now doing the Postgres database, they um, they still have some stuff in Airtable, so. Awesome. Yeah, so getting started for sure, that makes a lot of sense. So let's see here, I wanna see. Where is it? If Bobble could just make their database system look like Airtable, that would be the dream. <laughs> yes, it's that would be amazing. Thing I've ever seen that database layout. Just make an Excel look like an Excel sheet or anything else. It's terrible. All right. It is. Uh... Funny how much the user experience, yeah, and, and the visual aesthetics has on the actual impact of you using the the the, the tool. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. What am I doing here? What is it? What's my table even called? First table, that's what it is. So data source would be get data from an external API, error table, first table, and no constraints. And then I can come here and I can show my name. Insert first table's name. Notes. And... and so this might be a silly question, but in terms of when you're connecting your table via the plugin, uh, are you, I guess, syncing up the databases at times, or sometimes you're just accessing records that only live in the Air, Airtable database, or how does it? Yeah, so so right now I just created one, um, and then now I'm doing, I'm pulling information into it just to display it. But what we have done with backend workflows and, and the same um, plugin is to, is to do a recursive workflow to go and retrieve records that we haven't already retrieved and pull them in and create new records 
in the database in Bubble. And, and, and that creates a better yeah, speed performance, so that, that's slightly better than having to call Airtable each time? Yes. Um, it all, yeah, it is. And it is also, and I think probably that has to do with the clunkiness of Airtable and the fact that it wasn't designed to be the back end of an app, um, except in its own platform. Uh, because really making an API call and getting a response should, shouldn't be too much different from one API to the, to the other. But uh, for, but, but when I can go and see if I can find it where Airtable says, this is not the intended use of Airtable. Uh, I, I guess the, the big thing I see it is, is we, we use Integrum at a fair bit to, to do most of our API work because we're not quite able to write APIs ourselves. So we can use Integrum at to get the data pushed into Airtable and then have that set as a recursive you know, um, workflow in order to update the database you know, every 24 hours or something routinely. That way we've got the API connections all built. We're just using Airtable as that proxy. Yep. So you can see this came all from Airtable. So this data is not in... I didn't store this data with that I did here. I didn't store it in um, Bubble. I only stored, stored it in Airtable. So I can actually add to this from here. So third record status, still new notes. notes. How do the images look? Well, they're very small because I made them small, but it looks like looks okay. I'll make it bigger in just a second. Let's just another. Yep. So that was pretty fast. I don't know that that was any slower than what it is when I build with bubble, honestly. Interesting. That's, um, yeah. I think that really gives us a good short-term solution to solve, you know, we quickly get things sorted anyway, so anything we need to build. Yep. Especially with how easy Airtable is to build with. Yeah, let's see if I make this, uh, if I go to the repeating group and I make this just one instead, and I make this picture way bigger. And maybe just move this down. Yeah, that looks good to me. Yeah, well, that's a good look. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. That's, I think we've knocked over the canvas editor. We've knocked over how Airtable works. That's like, yeah, two of the big lingering you know, questions I had as well, all, all resolved. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to office hours. Yes. I, this was what I had. This was the dream. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. So awesome. Well, we're going to wrap up this broadcasted section of office hours, move into our after hours, which is members only, which means if you would like to become a member of pro no coders, you have to go to pronocoders.com and sign up. And remember, the price is going up at the new year. We'll be charging $119 per month instead of $99. So if you like that $99 per month price tag and you get to come to six sessions per week, uh, then please go sign up now because we'd love to see you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And yeah, I'll see you then.